This is the Monday Night Raw for July 26, 2022. Last night, Raw emanated from, if you couldn't guess it, Madison Square Garden in New York City. And it was a pretty big show with Roman Reigns actually showing up, a lot of pull-apart brawls, and Rey Mysterio's 20th anniversary celebration. Let's talk about that and everything else right after this. There is nothing like a good California wine. Their wines are the best in the country, and now you can have premium Californian wines delivered right to your door. Bar Winery produces boutique wines in small lots sourced all throughout Northern California's wine country. This allows them to carefully select the fruit of choice from some of the best vineyards in the region, paying close attention to every detail to bring you the most unique blends that are smooth and full of personality. They customize their award-winning wines based on their customers' feedback. And they also give back by donating 5% of the proceeds of any purchased wines to the community. Join their awesome wine club and have this amazing wine delivered to you or a friend all year round. Have an occasion coming? They can customize labels perfect for weddings, corporate events, and more. Visit their website today at barwinery.com. That's bar, B-A-H-R, winery.com. This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. One that everybody wants me. This is my eye. You're gonna acknowledge me. All right, everybody, welcome to the WWE podcast. It is Tuesday, July 26th, and just in case you missed it last night on Raw, they were in a secret location, very hidden from the public they didn't want anyone to know where they were last night it was a very subdued and secretive raw i think it took place somewhere in in the northeast i'm not sure but that's the speculation of course you know that when they're in new york city or a big market they can't help themselves but mention that market 40 times in the show i told you that the over under i didn't actually do the over under but i said the over under was about 30 I was probably close to that with Madison Square Garden being the most used phrase of the entire night. And I got to say, if I was if I was in that market, I would feel so just I don't know. I, I'm, I'm you know a few hours from New York City, but I would feel still like just I'm being exposed and used for my quote unquote, I guess, uh, status or, you know, the, 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 the perception of a big market to the, the public. I don't know. I am very, I guess, uh, I'm very overreactive to this more than most because of how WWE hides when they're in a smaller town, but let's move on. Uh, So welcome to the WWE podcast, guys. As I said, we are going to talk about Monday Night Raw and SummerSlam this week, which means a lot going on podcast-wise because we have Mr. and Mrs. Casual Wrestling Fan back tomorrow to answer your emails. So patrons and those who are non-patrons, Please get a hold of me. Patrons, you can send a message right in the internal system on Patreon. And those that are uh, not patrons can email us. And uh, the questions will be answered by Mr. and Mrs. Casual Wrestling Fan. The email is realwwepodcast at gmail.com. So get your questions in. I'll be doing all the voicemails, which uh, is is very appreciative, though. I'm very appreciative of Mr. Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan because the the, uh, mailbag is typically a very... Very daunting show to do, but as term in terms of uh, actual workload, and I appreciate their contributions to the show, and I know lo- you guys love them as well. So they will be joining us here tomorrow, and Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan himself will be with me to talk about SummerSlam at, on the preview show, the official preview and prediction show, coming Friday. Friday evening, it'll probably be dropping after SmackDown, probably 11, 12 o'clock at night, uh, so super late, but definitely available for you by SummerSlam morning for you to take a listen and hear our thoughts and official predictions about what the show could be and who could show up and uh, you know a lot of definite uh, I think big returns on the table. I got to say looking at this SummerSlam without giving away the farm here and giving away my picks cuz I still don't have them official official. But when you look at the, the the I guess the landscape of who could return, there's a lot of possible returns. 
let's go down the list just off the top of my head. Bailey, I'd give her like an eight or nine out of 10 in terms of uh, possible return. Edge, nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10 to return. We have Charlotte, I'd give it a five out of 10. Uh, We have, let's see, uh, The Rock, I'd give that like a two or three out of 10 after Roman Reigns uh, likely retains. Hint, hint, I don't think that's a spoiler. But those are just a few off the top of my head on you know top of more that I'm not even thinking about. But uh, that's it's, there's a lot of excitement around the possible returns that could happen at SummerSlam. Even if you're not excited about the potential matchups, there's a lot that could happen in terms of returns and also double turns meaning someone's going heel, the other person's going babyface, and vice versa. There's a lot of that going on, and the dynamic of the the crowd that's going to be there in the stadium uh, for SummerSlam that I think is going to really run the show with a couple of matches, specifically Logan Paul and, and The Miz, which you already saw hints of on Monday night. You already saw what the crowd is capable of and what they're hinting at when it comes to Logan Paul and The Miz. And I'll start there in just a second, but I want to invite you since it's SummerSlam week to join me on Patreon because you get access to the 24 seven discord server. It's live all the time. And it's a place that you can go to chat with the other patrons about wrestling during shows or whenever. And it's available for all patrons at patreon.com slash WWE podcast, as well as hundreds and hundreds of ad free shows and a shout out on this show. And, uh, you know, a, a ton of other uh, benefits, including video. I'll be doing video throughout the weekend, but that's only available to the SmackDown tier and higher. So that'll be available. You can also get us ad free on Apple podcasts. Click that ad free button. It's available right there. You don't have to do anything else for 99 cents a month or 10 bucks for the entire year or WWE podcast.com. That's where all of your ad free content is going to be. If you don't want the ads to interrupt your experience this weekend, and we're going to have a lot of content coming that's where you go for the ad-free experience. All right, let's get going. Let's talk about Monday Night Raw because, boy, uh, it was it was an interesting show. You know, it was for a go-home Monday Night Raw to SummerSlam. It felt fun. Uh, it, it, they always have to up their game when they are in Madison Square Garden, and they did, and they opened the show with something different that felt different. They haven't done it in a while. Not that we've never excuse me, never seen it, but it was something different with Logan Paul and The Miz brawling right at the beginning of Monday Night Raw. So the bloodline opens the show with an in-ring promo. Reigns demanded to be acknowledged before saying he didn't want to talk anymore and handing the microphone to Paul. Paul cut a really good promo, as he often does, and uh, he was talking about the SummerSlam match, and... Uh, he cut a promo again about Reigns' SummerSlam match with Brock, saying their names, Brock and Romans, that is, are tied together in the minds of fans and that that will no longer be true after Reigns destroys Lesnar at SummerSlam. Theory interrupted, saying everyone was forgetting the most important factor heading into the event, his plan to cash in the Money in the Bank contract on the winner. Reigns told Theory he needed to realize that his daddy... <laughs> was gone, and he was now in Reigns' ring. Theory hit Jey Uso with the Money in the Bank briefcase as the bloodline left the ring, but it led to nothing more than Reigns laughing and calming the Usos down. So, you know, this there have been a lot of awful, awful, awful career-ending lines from Bro- uh, for Brock from Roman Reigns. Suffering succotash, among others. Remember all that? Now, that was when he was a babyface. Feels like an, a millennia ago. But Roman Reigns has had many more bad, embarrassing phrases than he's had good ones. This was by far the best line he's ever delivered in his entire career. I don't know if it was pre-planned. I'd imagine it was. If it was, it's a great line. A great line. It, it, it was just hilarious. And then the crowd starting to, started to chant, who's your daddy? Which I think you could, this could be one of those suplex city type of moments. Where, if you remember, at WrestleMania 31, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns were in the match at the main event of WrestleMania, the infamous heist of the century from Seth. But during that match, Brock Lesnar was caught on camera audio saying Suplex City, B, B word. Uh, And that immediately turned into a t-shirt. It turned into an entire merchandising line. It turned into a lot of uh, promo 
uh, lines, all that. Now, that was organic. Even if this was staged, I think this could be a phrase that turns into a T-shirt. It turns into a chant at theory throughout its career. It could be, or at least in the short term. We'll see how long it lasts. But this is one of those lines. You could just feel it. It was just like, oh, that was perfect, right? Obviously referencing Vince McMahon as his daddy. Perfect line, perfectly delivered. Even the uh, New York City crowd, which is hard to hard to shock. The New York City crowd is hard to, um, really hard to get a big reaction out of. They're a tough crowd, but they reacted big to this and chanted, who's your daddy? Now, for those that aren't familiar with the New York City crowd in terms of sports, MLB specifically, this does have ties to MLB if anyone cares, which is maybe also why they chanted it with the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox back in the um, early 2000s when the Red Sox and Yankees were in the ALCS and Pedro Martinez famously said to the New York Yankees, who's your daddy? And then every time Pedro would come out, they chanted at him and he would, he'd start to lose and he'd start to get hit around by the Yankees. They chanted at, chanted at him and even up to 2009 when he went to the Phillies and uh, faced the Yankees in the World Series there, <clears throat> there was still those chants. So it, it does have ties back to baseball, and I don't know if that was if there's any relation there in terms of why the crowd chanted that, but it triggered something in the fans, and it was perfect. It was a great moment, and I think this could be something chanted at Theory for quite some time, and we'll see. Maybe it's a one-time thing, but it, it's got that, that special kind of moment to it. Okay. So the bloodline then defeat the Street Profits and Riddle when Roman Reigns hit Riddle with a spear. <clears throat> now, this was at the end of Raw. I know I'm jumping around, but staying on the bloodline for you know the time being here, we did see Roman Reigns compete on Raw for the first time since, I think it's, somebody said, I think it was September of 2021. Yeah, September of 2021 is the last time he wrestled on Monday Night Raw. A- amazing, right? I mean, not only did he show up, but he actually competed on the show for the first time in almost a year. It's amazing. Uh, and now they're also talking about Roman Reigns' 700th day as world champion. That will happen on Saturday. Well, actually, it's 699 on Saturday. Sunday would be the 700th day for him with him as champion. And <clears throat> guys, they're 70% of the way to 1,000. You think... As the, di- the time goes by, the clock ticks away, and the days go by, that they're going to just say, eh, well, we're 70% of the way to 1,000. Let's, guys, let's just cut it short. I, I can't see it, guys. We potentially have another 300 days with him as champion. Now, to appease the fans that might actually lose their minds and actually tune out and get legitimately angry at the company, not necessarily the character they will likely split the championships where Raw does get a championship back, the WWE championship, and he'll still continue his reign as universal champion, which will continue the streak, and they can get to their 1,000 days. <clears throat> and don't forget, this 700-day count that'll happen on Sunday, that started before he became universal champion, or undisputed uh, champion at WrestleMania. So for them to continue it, if he gives up the WWE championship, uh, it makes sense because they started what? How many days was he? 400 some days, however long, I don't know, 500 days as champion before WrestleMania. And they just continued that. And if he loses the WWE championship, but keeps the universal, why wouldn't the streak keep going? If 500 of the days didn't include that other championship, why would you not continue it? So I think that there's something there that they could have their cake and eat it too. I've said it before and I'll say it again though. It'll appease the fans and I'll uh, to get at least one of the belts off of, of Roman. You'll have a world champion on raw for, you know, hopefully every week and it'll take some of the heat off the company for taking both championships and putting them into, you know, oblivion with Roman reigns. So that's what I think is going to happen. I hope that happens. So if, if I think if Roman drops the championship at SummerSlam, You'll see something that Paul Heyman will pull out of his ass or uh, maybe Adam Pierce, somebody somewhere up high is able to come up with some legality, some loophole where that match 
was actually only for the WWE Championship. Somebody made a typo. Somebody put something wrong in the contract, and they didn't say it was for the undisputed. They said it was for the WWE. Therefore, Roman only, Roman only has to drop the WWE Championship and still remains universal. I think they could do that, and maybe they should do that. So, uh, But guys, the fact that there are 700 days and they're 70% of the way to 1,000, it's too close now. We've gone too far for WWE to stop. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. So, all right. But Roman Reigns did beat Riddle clean in the ring after a spear. And Riddle ends up taking the pinfall. And then after uh, the match, Seth Rollins, who we thought maybe I was like, oh, is he interrupting Roman? And he, it was kind of an interesting time for, for Seth Rollins to come out. But it was to just take out Riddle. Could it be foreshadowing for an eventual Roman Seth rematch? I hope so. And they will eventually have a match. I am really looking forward to it. But whenever that is right now, it's Riddle Rollins and Rollins got the best of Riddle with a couple of stomps, a beat down with the stairs at the end of raw and uh, the people singing along to Seth Rollins music. So which didn't even didn't even get played at the end of raw. People were just being, uh, I guess, just, just doing it themselves. So that is uh, that's what happened with the end of Raw. And, you know, back to the beginning of Raw, because I didn't really finish my thoughts on Logan Paul. The crowd did exactly what I said. I, I, I was thinking that WWE should be very worried about the crowd that's in attendance for MSG. You know, they're the quote unquote hardcore crowd. They're the, the older generation they're more difficult to please. They have higher standards. And uh, that's just the market that you're in. Same with Philadelphia or any of the large marks, Chicago, kind of same thing. And you think it's going to be any different at SummerSlam with people that are there that are the older generation? Not to say there's not going to be families there, but it's going to be more of a minority of families because it's just too damn expensive to, to bring your family for most people than the actual single male or maybe a bunch of guy friends get together and go that are in, you know, from 18 to 40, that's kind of your demo for the, those large expensive events are typically they, they, they kind of trend towards those demos, which means it's the same type of people that are in attendance for SummerSlam that were in attendance at New York city's Madison square garden. And that means that I think that the reaction Logan Paul got on raw will translate and magnify at SummerSlam. Because they tried, you know, they tried to make Logan Paul a babyface. But when Logan Paul came back out for implausible, implausible, whatever, uh, he got booed pretty good, especially when he mentioned his brother, Jake, and how he's having a boxing match with, I mean, really, who gives a damn? But they are not likable people. They're not inherently likable. They're, they're social media stars that started their fame on Vine. And congratulations to them. They were able to build millions of followers and great. They're, they're millionaires right now and they're both really good athletes, but that doesn't help you with the common man. That doesn't help you to be relatable to most people. And that immediately turns you off on top of the fact they both have kind of an arrogance about them that they can't help. So you mention all that on top of some scandalous things that have happened with Logan Paul in the past and you add it all up. And the crowd just doesn't endear themselves to Logan Paul. And I don't think they're going to at SummerSlam either. The, Logan Paul got a lot of booze. And why they're trying to make him babyface, I don't know. Even with Champa attacking Logan Paul during Impulsable, that didn't help. The crowd didn't know what to do because The Miz is good at being unlikable. But the people respect The Miz because he's been there for 15, 16 years, 17 years, whatever it's been. And Logan Paul's this outsider that came in. And the only reason he's famous is because he's a social media star. And you have guys like Champa who are kind of the workhorses or were the workhorses of NXT coming in. And you, you don't know what to do because they're heels. You want to boo them. But Logan Paul's not a likable guy. So the crowd just kind of goes, I don't know what to do. And I think they lean towards booing Logan Paul and cheering the Miz. Just be, just, just, and this is not a babyface term for the Miz, but Logan Paul's that unlikable. And I think the WWE is going to have a hell of a, a, a time on their hands trying to get Logan Paul cheered at SummerSlam. Good luck. Good luck. It's going to be just the end. The other thing about this segment, 
with Logan Paul and The Miz that happened as Logan Paul called out The Miz on Impulsable. They brought Maurice out and Maurice is trying to come up with the word genitalia. She can't say genitalia. I don't think that was genuine, but who knows? She does sometimes have a very heavy French accent that I can't uh, hear through on certain words. But are we really basing this entire rivalry on a high school insult? Is that seriously what this whole thing's built around? Is Logan Paul saying that the Miz has small testicles? Are we going back to juvenile humor here? This is like a Vince McMahon you know, hangover. And Triple H is going to have to get through this before he can implement his own stories is just kind of finishing off what Vince was doing and then come up with his own stuff once those programs are complete. So, by the way, Triple H, if you haven't heard, is now head of creative. Don't expect immediate change. If you want to hear an in-depth, total uh, deep dive into what this could mean for WWE, go check out my podcast that I did with Anthony DeMarco, the current state of WWE that we dropped uh, yesterday. Really great conversation. But Triple H is now head of creative, and he's going to have to kind of just flush out the rest of the Vince storylines that he didn't want to do. He'll see them through out of respect and out of just storyline logic, and then he'll be able to implement his own as those programs come to a natural end. But are we really going to be basing the entire storyline on Logan Paul saying, oh, you're small blueberries or you're whatever, whatever stupid euphemism he wants to come up with at the time? No one's laughing at this, by the way. This is not a funny insult. It's not a deep insult. It's, it's, it's seriously middle school. It's, it's not even high school. I, I, that's too much credit. I'd give it middle school, like sixth, seventh, eighth grade crap. It's awful. Uh, and the crowd wasn't having it. Nobody's impressed by this. No one cares about the size of his testicles. It's, it's uh, extremely sophomoric, superficial, and it's garbage. I mean, I did nothing else to say about that. So, all right, let's take a break for the sponsor of today's episode, which is Bar Winery. We're going to take a, a quick break and hear from them, and then we will be right back. There is nothing like a good California wine. Their wines are the best in the country, and now you can have premium Californian wines delivered right to your door. Bar Winery produces boutique wines in small lots sourced all throughout Northern California's wine country. This allows them to carefully select the fruit of choice from some of the best vineyards in the region, paying close attention to every detail to bring you the most unique blends that are smooth and full of personality. They customize their award-winning wines based on their customers' feedback, and they also give back by donating 5% of the proceeds of any purchased wines to the community. Join their awesome wine club and have this amazing wine delivered to you or a friend all year round. Have an occasion coming? They can customize labels perfect for weddings, corporate events, and more. Visit their website today at barwinery.com. That's bar, B-A-H-R, winery.com. Welcome back to the WWE Podcast. Let's get back to more great wrestling audio. So one more thing that I want to bring up, I was during the break, I was looking at uh, some of the notes that I had for Monday Night Raw and uh, one, one more thing about Maurice that she said outside of her, you know, just kind of sometimes she has a weird way of saying things did. Maybe I totally missed this. So if I did, I'll take responsibility that I just didn't pay attention to part of Logan Paul's promo before Maurice came out. But she said to Logan Paul when she came out. Don't talk about my TV show or my kids. I'm like, did I miss something? Did Logan Paul mention anything about Ms. and Mrs. or uh, Ms. and Maurice's kids? If he did, again, I missed it. So if he didn't, I'm going to go with that just because I have some things to say about that. And if again, somebody's like, he did mention it. You just missed it. Then fine. But if he didn't. I'm guessing that the reason that she said that is that Logan Paul was supposed to mention something about his kids and Mrs. Ms. and Mrs. And he forgot the lines or just didn't put them in the promo. And Maurice came out and said them anyway, even though Logan Paul missed it. So, <laughs> so um, did, did anybody else miss that? Or may, again, maybe I was tuned out. It's possible. 
I, I've screaming kids around the house most of the day. So it's possible. So anyway, let's uh, let's move on here. And I want to talk about Drew McIntyre in theory. That match was good. Any match Drew McIntyre and Theory are in are just inherently good. They've got, they really have really good in ring talent. WWE, I have to say, for a lot of its character flaws and weird storylines and bad attempts at comedy, in ring, they are second to none. Professionalism, all, I mean, like, really, in ring, I have to give WWE credit. Now, everybody kind of feels the same because they're taught the same. So that's another problem where everyone does look professional, they're polished. But everyone kind of feels the same. The match layout's the same. You know when a match, a false finish is coming. You know when a real kickout's coming. You know, like generally speaking, you know that like every match has the kind of same layout to it, the same feeling to it, doesn't it? So that's one drawback. But everyone is polished and very professional, I have to say. So with Drew McIntyre in theory, the match was really good. And Drew McIntyre defeated Theory via DQ because Sheamus, Ridge Holland, and Butch attacked McIntyre. And then Lashley went into the ring to help McIntyre you know, get rid of the heels. But in good old uh, WWE logic slash Teddy Long theory, uh, no pun intended, we got a six-man, or I'm sorry, a, a, a tag team match, another six-man tag. We had that later in the show. A tag team match with Bobby and Drew versus Theory and Sheamus. And Drew and Bobby beat Theory and Sheamus via submission when Lashley put Theory in the hurt lock. The match came to a finish um, when we had Theory be distracted by Ziggler, who was on the outside of the ring by the announce table looking at his phone. And Theory immediately tapped out to the hurt lock after the distraction, which wasn't even really a distraction by Ziggler. He's just standing there. And then Theory was also hit by a double super kick by the Usos when he was at the top of the ramp leaving. So not a good night for Theory, who got laid out a couple of times. And you wonder what Ziggler could, what the impact of Ziggler could have, the impact he could have at SummerSlam when Theory tries to cash in, where there's an opportunity. Both men are really down. He's doing exactly what he said he was going to do. And now you have Ziggler spoiling it. I think that's a real possibility for whatever we have still, it's been three weeks. We have no clue what the problem Ziggler has with theory is none. And again, I don't know if WWE knows that's why they're waiting. Maybe that's the problem, but I think Ziggler could have something to say about uh, theories cash in at SummerSlam for whatever that's worth to you. So uh, moving on here, the Mysterios then defeat the judgment day via pinfall, but Here's the thing. This was a this was a tribute show in part to Rey Mysterio and his 20 years in WWE, nearly to the day, off by one day. No, no, no. It was exactly right. It was June, July 25th. Yeah, so they got it exactly to the day of Rey Mysterio's debut in WWE. Really cool, and they did a nice video package as WWE always does, always does. And uh, we had Rey Mysterio come into the arena with his family with his completely wallpaper boring wife and i say that in a way that not disrespectfully for her as a person but i remember when she was in wwe and the whole eye for an eye thing with seth remember that during the uh, pandemic era and she barely said anything her reactions were terrible she she sometimes overacted or underacted she just she's just seemed totally out of place And almost like a robot at times. So I mean that in a way that from a character perspective, she's extremely boring, I have to say. And uh, so anyway, but this was a nice tribute show to Rey Mysterio. And, you know, Rey talked about how, you know, that, you know, he's very grateful and how he wasn't supposed to be where he is. And he's a small guy and all that stuff. And it was heartfelt. It really was. And I have nothing to say bad about that. Now, at the end of this, we had Finn Balor and uh, D- uh, Damian Priest come through the crowd, and that's what started their tag team match, which was supposed to happen anyway. And uh, the match ended with the Mysterios beating the Judgment Day when Ray hit Finn with a frog splash, and it was fine. I mean, the, the problem is that the Judgment Day lost clean. <laughs> and after this, though, Ray's backstage celebrating with his family and friends. Ray, uh, Rhea Ripley, a returning Rhea Ripley, is she's back. She confronted Ray in her in his uh, celebration room, and dragged out, shoved uh, Aaliyah, 
dragged out Dominic, who suddenly just can't defend himself. I mean, he, he's able to compete with high level world class athletes in the ring, but suddenly just, you know, can't defend himself because a woman's touching him. And boy, let me tell you one thing right now, and this is going to cause a lot of people to get angry with me. and I don't care when TV 14 happens. If assuming it does. One of the first things that I want gone in terms of policy is when a woman attacks a man that the man can't retaliate simply because she's a woman. I'm not advocating for unprovoked violence, chair shots against women, but I think the PG uh, PG cap is preventing men from attacking women even after the woman has attacked them. Outside of Randy Orton, who suddenly somehow has this magical shield around him because he's Randy Orton, and when he delivers RKO's to anyone, people pop. Outside of that, everyone else... When a woman attacks them, they just go, oh, well, you're a woman. I can't retaliate, which is a whole bunch of crap. So that's one of the first things I want gone because it's just it's, it's because they're a woman. They have just this invisible shield of of protection around them because, well, I'm a woman, right? It's nonsense, total nonsense. I hate it. So Dominic, as much as I don't like Dominic, I did not like this segment where Dominic is just deciding to, uh, you know, get ragdolled around because, oh, oh, man, a woman's touching me. I guess I'll just take the beating. It's crap. And I know some of you are like, you know, probably not enthralled with that statement, but I, you know, that's just kind of how I feel. Um, so don't, don't forget guys, this is a, a fantasy environment. Okay. This is a entertainment environment. If somebody out there and somebody's going to take this this way. And if you do, I don't, I really don't care. But if someone out there is saying, Oh, what a total chauvinistic pig who likes to see men beat up women. If that's what you took from this statement, then you take that and run with it. Okay. But that's exactly how I feel. And I'm not apologizing for it. It's entertainment. I just think it's illogical for men to just cower when a woman attacks them. It's just self-defense. And, you know, in, and anyway, so before I get down a deep down hole, rabbit hole, the Mysterios or rather specifically Ray gets put through a table after a uh, triple teaming up on, on Ray. I guess everybody got a shot in on Ray from the judgment day. They power bombed him through the table. Rhea got another shot in with a kick to his shoulder and they're going to have a match at uh, SummerSlam now in a no disqualification match, by the way, with uh, the Mysterio versus judgment day again in a no DQ match, by the way, no teaser from edge this week, which is really surprising. I thought edge actually had a real shot at returning this week, but they're saving that considering it's MSG. I think they're saving that for SummerSlam. But the, the one thing about this that made me kind of sad is no turn from Dominic. No turn. It would have been the perfect time to do it. Your entire family's there. It's a 20th uh, anniversary, the celebration of your dad's career. You're in Madison Square Garden. What better place to turn on your dad, go dark, and join the Judgment Day? There's no better time to do it. Now, SummerSlam, you could argue, is also a good platform to do it, a good time. And it is. And I'll still allow that. But can we, for God's sakes, make Dominic an interesting character? Please. He is so boring. Can we do something with him? Turn on his dad. I'm, I'm asking WWE, pleading with them. Anyway, so that's the one sad moment we got was no turn from Dominic yet. If it doesn't happen at SummerSlam, I don't think it's happening. Okay. Becky Lynch and Bianca briefly brawled after uh, they had a confrontation on the mic, which Bianca came out. She was going to have some kind of statement or something. And Becky Lynch immediately interrupts, like immediately. And all Bianca had to say to Becky before Becky attacked her was, I'm the EST. I'm the best. I'm the brightest. I'm the fastest. I'm the strongest. Like the most arrogant sh crap <laughs> that you could think of. And I'm like, how are we supposed to cheer for this? How are we supposed to cheer for this woman who is just, that's what she has to say. That's all she came out to say. That's all she has to say is I'm the EST of everything. Girl, uh-uh. How is anybody cheering this anymore? I, for, for me, Bianca is more heel than babyface. She's not completely turned, but you can't tell me this is not a hint of what's possibly happening here because Becky Lynch came out, no backup. Didn't do anything underhanded, came out and just beat the crap out of Bianca straight up. That's what baby faces do. Heels run their mouths and call themselves the best and the brightest and the fastest and the strongest. 
How does anyone not see this now as a turn? At least hinting at the official turn coming. So I think it's right there for the taking. People don't want to boo Becky anyway. Now, she got a generally negative reaction, but people are hesitantly doing it. I don't think anyone genuinely hates Becky like they genuinely hate Roman or or Seth at times. You know, the, the, there's not that that genuine hate for Becky where Bianca's finally being exposed. Her character's being exposed as this arrogant person. And it's great for both women because now they can switch into the roles that they're meant to be in. And I hope it happens at SummerSlam because I really have a feeling like the Logan Paul Miz match, there's going to be a very heavy, strong, mixed reaction for these women at SummerSlam. All right. Now we've got Alpha Academy versus AJ and Dolph Ziggler. A backstage confrontation earlier in the show led Ziggler to teaming up with AJ to take on Gable and Otis. They started out, Gable and Ziggler, that is, started for their teams and had a fun mat wrestling exchange. I'm reading a bit of a, a description to make sure I don't uh, miss anything because, guys, this was not on the Hulu uh, version, which tells you all you need to know about how WWE views the importance of this match. But all four guys did well. They meshed pretty well together. Even though Otis is being booked as a powerhouse, I think he's more than capable of hanging in the ring with guys like Ziggler and Styles and Ziggler ended up getting the victory by pinning Gable with a zigzag. I can't remember the last time, by the way, a zigzag ended a match. The zigzags turned into a transition move. The, t- the zigzag has been like a clothesline the last 15 years, or rather five to 10 years. Um, but it was the match was good, and I don't know what we make of it with Ziggler and uh, Z- you know Ziggler getting the victory with AJ. I, I don't know. So AJ and Ziggler get the victory. Over the, over the Alpha Academy, and boy, Alpha Academy has fallen, haven't they? There was a time, there was a time, and I, I'm old enough to remember when they were feuding with RK Bro, and they were the highlight of Raw. I mean, I look forward to their interactions, the shoosh, and it turned into a t-shirt, and Otis had an aura about him. There was so much, and boy, have they fallen. Um, You know, so... That said, I don't think the Alpha Academy is done. I just think that right now they are not, clearly not, the focus of WWE's creative right now. So that is, uh, that's what happened here. And again, a Raw that made you go, all right, I'm ready for SummerSlam. I think all of us at this point now are ready for SummerSlam and to, to kind of get through it and see what Clash at the Castle is going to bring because... More than likely, Drew McIntyre will win his match against Sheamus. McIntyre will go on to Clash at the Castle, likely against Roman Reigns. And there in Wales, he could, after I think it's been 30 years since they've been there. They keep touting that stat. He could get a massive victory in Wales to an explosive reaction. I, You know, there are crowds throughout the year. Of WWE, the calendar of the pay-per-views, the, the way that, you know, the, the markets they're in, New York, Chicago, day after WrestleMania, there are certain crowds you look at and go, oh, that's going to be a hot crowd. This one in Wales has the potential to be like a top five in the last 10 years. I mean, just because it's been 30 years, you're going to have Drew challenging, I think. It's not official yet. I didn't, nothing's Adam pierced about it, but it has to be official that Drew McIntyre, given he did all the promotion work there, he's from Ireland and it makes sense that he is challenging Roman Reigns for that championship. Maybe it's universal or the undisputed, whatever it is. So he's going to be there. And I think that that crowd who hasn't had an event in so long, there's so much pent up, I think, uh, I guess anticipation excitement for this event that you could have a crowd that is absolutely out of their minds. It's going to be a fun crowd. I hope I don't see how it doesn't get to be just absolutely like, it's going to be one of those that the crowd adds so much to the show where if the crowd wasn't there, it would not be as it wouldn't be as good of a show without it. And you know, that's true for every show, but there are certain, there are certain crowds that just add so much to the presentation. And I think Wales at clash at the castle could be, one of those that has the potential to be one of those memorable crowd chanting nights. So just keep a lookout for that. Now, 
the rest of this week. Again, tomorrow is the mailbag. And also, don't forget, I have the WWE Slam that I do on the DuPont Network. DuPont Now is the network. If you want to go check it out, it's free, by the way, to sign up. You don't have to pay anything. And you can check me out every Saturday at 8 o'clock for an hour-long show where I mostly focus on SmackDown but look ahead to like SummerSlam and the, other, the upcoming uh, premium live events. So check me out there. It's called the WWE Slam every Saturday at 8 o'clock on the DuPont Now or DuPont Network. Go to DuPontNow.com. Um, so, but beyond that, there's going to be a preview and prediction show with Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan on Friday night. The SmackDown review comes to you Saturday. The uh, preview, or rather the review show, will likely happen Monday. I'll try to see if I can get it in Sunday night. More than likely, it'll be Monday then I'll get you guys the review and reaction show, at least the full one. Sometimes I do the kind of a teaser review show. So we'll see how that shakes out. Again, I mentioned I have family coming over this weekend, I think. And if that happens, it's kind of throwing a wrench into my ability to watch it live and to be able to react live, excuse me, and to be able to give it to you guys, give you the review right away that I know you want. So just a heads up there, but I'll give you, I'll get you the review as quickly as I can, I promise. And uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. And then, of course, we're back into regularly scheduled programming as we now will move into Clash of the Castle season next week. So a lot coming up, certainly. And join us at patreon.com slash WWE podcast for $1 a month to start. It gets you everything ad free on top of the 24 seven discord server that's open all times to get in and chat rest chat about really wrestling and anything you want, but wrestling would be the main topic there. And I'd hope you join us or Apple podcasts, click the ad free button, go ad free there. And lots of other ways. WWE podcast.com has ad free as well as video too. So everybody, thank you so much for joining me here on the WWE podcast. Stick with us throughout SummerSlam. We're going to be pushing out a ton of content, lots of great co-hosts and more that you, I think you'll enjoy. So everybody, thanks so much for listening. As always, take care, and I'll talk to you next time. There is nothing like a good California wine. Their wines are the best in the country, and now you can have premium Californian wines delivered right to your door. Bar Winery produces boutique wines in small lots sourced all throughout Northern California's wine country. This allows them to carefully select the fruit of choice from some of the best vineyards in the region, paying close attention to every detail to bring you the most unique blends that are smooth and full of personality. They customize their award-winning wines based on their customers' feedback, and they also give back by donating 5% of the proceeds of any purchased wines to the community. Join their awesome wine club and have this amazing wine delivered to you or a friend all year round. Have an occasion coming? They can customize labels perfect for weddings, corporate events, and more. Visit their website today at barwinery.com. That's bar, B-A-H-R, winery.com. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.